All right, this is show number 98, recorded on November 12th, 2013. And tonight, our special guest is Zach Prez. Zach, how are you? I'm great. Thanks for having me. Yeah, awesome. And uh, we'll be going over a few things in just a minute. But before we do, I want to say that, you know, we're getting close to show number 100. It'll be right now, Tim, we've scheduled it for December 10th. Because Correct. this is the last show before we take a two-week holiday. We did this last year. We're going to do it this year. Two-week holiday before Thanksgiving, then we'll do another one at Christmas. It gives me some time to do some retooling I need to do. Uh, let me start the live, the hangout on air. It does. I need to do some software retooling, and then in the two-week break that we do in December, I need to do some um, hardware around the, around the studio retooling. So we'll do those during the break. But Zach is going to cover a subject that I think is every photographer – Every photographer who wants to do, you know, take their business to the next level or wants to, you know, just grow their business or maybe you're just a weekend photographer and you want to, you know, get more of that. You know, we're going to cover a subject that is you really need to pay attention to that I think a lot of photographers don't pay enough attention to. You know, most people who get into photography th think that all I got to do is be a good photographer and that'll be, that'll do it. That's all I got to do is just be a great photographer. We've talked about this a lot on the show is that having a successful photography business is more about the business than it is about the photography. And Zach's going to cover a, a portion of that with us tonight. We also, if you hang out toward the end of the show, we do have the photo contest for October. Yeah, October. And we will announce the finalist and the winner of that contest. We'll do that at the back end so we don't take up too much of Zach's time here on the front end. Um, so, Zach, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I have got a long history of internet marketing. Um, I'm an MBA and I've worked at Intel for a number of years and but really I'm just dedicated to everything online, which is really fun and always changing and it helps give photographers a lot of business. Uh, about five years ago I changed my consulting from general to focusing on photographers. Helped a friend get ranked in Google. She said, how did you do that? Um, so through a couple of conversations with her, I kind of coached her into ranking well, and she said, you should turn that into a guide because photographers need to know how to rank and search. They need to know um, what to do with their websites to get more sales. And it was about five years ago when I wrote my first ebook on that subject, and I've since written a number of ebooks and um, written a lot of articles on photography sites and magazines just about how you can get more business through the web. So we can cover some of that tonight. Awesome. And you're talking about SEO there, right? Yeah. Um, search engines is kind of one piece of it. I think what we'll focus on tonight is just how to convert more people. I'm, for example, even if you rank high in search, it doesn't mean those people are going to hire you. So the process of converting those people to sales is what I'm going to focus on. Um, okay. It's not a... a overly discussed topic like SEO is, and I, I love SEO, but SEO is really only one piece of a bigger web plan and uh, really doing what you intend your website to do, which is to get you more business or more attention or more networking and relationships. Okay. Well, first let me ask you a question before you get into that, is you're talking about a website. So what if I'm a photographer and all I got right now is Facebook page? And I'm I would to... say, <laughs> <laughs> I hope that's not the case. <laughs> well, it's, it's, you know, I'm not a professional photographer, neither is Tim. So I, I, when I speak about this, I'm speaking in general. But I'm sure there are some photographers whose main focus is, and maybe their, own, their primary focus, uh, or, or their only focus, is their Facebook page. They're trying to get more and more and more likes and neglecting or not even doing a website. So if I don't have a website and I'm only focused on... Uh, Facebook, how important is a website to me? Uh, it's it's everything. <laughs> uh, I definitely wouldn't put all my trust in my business in the hands of Mark Zuckerberg. You know, it's, it's a lot of risk to be taking uh, your entire brand and positioning it with one company who can control and do whatever they want with all your content. For example, um, if you've got a, a business page on Facebook, you've noticed in your stats that they do not show those posts to everybody. So if you've got a thousand likes, on average, maybe only 20 or 30 percent of those are seeing your post. Mm 
Right. So 200 out of 1,000. Um, and why would I want to reduce my market and my messages by 80%? You know, it's still a necessary evil and still worth doing. But as we talk about conversion, um, even conversions extends beyond your website. Really, you should be using Facebook to drive people back to your site, which is your hub for your brand and something you own and control and can um, retain those customers on your own time and not these uh, seconds squeezed into somebody's social media day. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I've noticed uh, if I do a post on my page, on the JPEG to Raw Facebook page, one, every time I do a post, I have somebody unlike the page. That's, yeah. I, have that, I have that happen. Right. But two, if I link to an article on our website or somewhere else, like I think I did one and linked to something of you, that fewer people see that post than if I did a post that had no link in it whatsoever. Right. So Facebook's got this algorithm called Edge Rank. It figures out how much they want to show uh, your post and how important it is and how relevant they think that post is to your connections because if Facebook showed everything, people would get overwhelmed pretty quickly. Uh, so they determine how many people should it show to. Uh, and a part of conversion is getting it to show to more people. Because the more people that see, the more people that can you know, interact with your brand, can call you, hire you, make it to your web page, etc. Uh, so one of the things I recommend for converting on Facebook is to establish uh, engagement um, Facebook wants to see posts with a lot of graphics, so images or photo galleries or video. They want a lot of comments, a lot of likes, a lot of shares. And if there's a lot of buzz going on with your posts, Facebook will be forced to show it to more people. Otherwise, they would be essentially limiting really good content to people, and people wouldn't like Facebook for that. They don't want Facebook to choose what they want to see as is, um, followers of a business. So you really need to drive up that engagement, and you'll see the more that people comment, like, share a post, the more they will show it, and that essentially means more potential business for you or more action out of your users. Okay. All right, so if I'm going to do a web page, um, I've, I've got the Facebook page, I'm doing all that, uh, I'm going to do a web page. You know, uh, you know, a web page can be very intimidating. Should I do WordPress.org, yeah. uh, self self-hosted WordPress? Yes. Not WordPress at yeah. all. You know, what's what's my is WordPress really my only choice? And in that case, it's your only choice. Okay. Yeah. Um, five years ago, it was the blue domain flash sites of the world. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody thinks they have to have animation and music and these um, galleries set to like this online experience. Uh, well, people as they have moved into mobile and just um, getting the internet in small bites through search or social, uh, all these things, people are digesting the web in tiny increments. So we're talking like a minute or less. Okay. Oftentimes it's on their phone. They don't want that whole experience. They want their information fast, direct, and easy. Um, to do that, uh, the best option is WordPress. It's a WordPress.org self-hosted blog it's got the best chance of ranking well. Um, it's easy to pin anything, to share any of the individual images or pages on Facebook. So it really lends itself to this search social mobile experience, which is where everything is in the web now. Okay, so you're saying I should go to WordPress.org because I, I, you know, right now we have a self-hosted, and when I say self-hosted, I don't mean a computer in my house. I mean, yeah, <laughs> I have, you know, we have a. Uh, internet, I don't know what you call them, a hosting company that has the website. Right. Um, but you're saying instead of doing that, I should be on WordPress.org? Well, WordPress is just the blog system. It's a platform. So for photographers out there who manage their own websites and they update it themselves through any type of company, that's just a website platform. WordPress is one option for that. It's an input mechanism for your site. And if you do a non uh, if you don't host it yourself, essentially you are um, putting your web page on somebody else's domain, like uh, WordPress.com. If, if your blog URL is Zach.WordPress.com or Zach.Blogger.com, um, you don't really own that. You're using their free system. Right. So WordPress.org is one where you actually have to buy the internet space from a web host, like GoDaddy or Bluehost. 
and you put your files there. Then you can do whatever you want with them. They're yours, and you have your own domain name tied to that. So that's definitely the route you want to take. You want to own and be in control of your content. Okay, maybe I was thinking. Maybe I got those reversed then, because um, if you're doing web, WordPress.org and blue, using blue domains, you're installing WordPress on their server, and you're you're doing everything with it, right? Yeah, you want to move out of the blue domains of the world and into the um, pro photo blogs of the world. You want to get a, a WordPress site that you own and you don't need anything else. You don't need a um, site that you build yourself with Wix or you don't need a, a blue domain or a Squarespace type site. You definitely want a, a WordPress blog. Okay. And, and then I think what I was confusing is WordPress.com and WordPress.org. Right. WordPress.com. WordPress. WordPress.com, you just get a site running today. Uh, it's like setting up a Hotmail or a Gmail account. You basically do a couple clicks. You don't pay anything, and you're running. It's less technical to set up, but again, they're owning your, your web presence, uh, and they don't have the power and plugins that a WordPress.org has. Okay. That, yeah, that's important. You want to be hosting it yourself through, you know, we use uh, DreamHost. I think another one was, was it Blue? Bluehost. Bluehost, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so you want to do something like that. Yeah. Because, again, you're out there. It's all part of um, driving people closer to a sale. When you think about your total network, this is word of mouth plus your business cards plus your flyers and your Facebook fans and people who search for you and email about you. All that stuff, think of your total network. And you need to convert as many of those people to sales as possible. And you need a website as your hub to pull in all those pieces to the same spot so that you're in control of that experience for them and can share information or photos or education with them to lead them closer to that purchase so that when they're ready, they remember you and they call you, either because they're following your blog or um, they like you on Facebook. But essentially, at some point, they've seen you enough times to where they're going to say, okay, I'm ready to book a session. Okay. And uh, you, you're talking about building the web page and, and converting sales and everything. One of the first steps after I, I, I think I'm going to set up a web page, I've got to come up with a name, my URL, right? What I'm right. Gonna buy and that part of my brand that I want to stick with, I would think. Yeah. Um, you've got a lot of different options for that. Some people go with their name. Some people go with uh, a business name like... Um, ZachPrez.com would be a domain around my name. PhotographySpark.com would be a name around my business name. Or you do something keyword focused uh, strictly for search purposes like um, PhotographyBusinessEducation.com. So it's really between the three, personal name, business name, or a keyword name. Um, I don't know if there's, I mean, there's pros and cons to all, all those options. It's really a matter of preference. Yeah. But I think the, the most important is one that they will remember. They're probably most likely to remember your name. Um, and as we talk about conversion, it's really important to personalize your site and your brand. I ran with a very um, corporate-looking website for a long time before I heard that if I add myself and my personality and my face all over it, people will trust me more than they would trust a business because they see me as a peer, not as a, a faceless corporation. Okay. So choosing your domain name should also be personal, and I think uh, photographers that do well often are branded around their uh, their name as their domain name. Yeah, yeah, good point. And you mentioned blogging, so we had a question out in chat, Is and I have the same problem that, that Nikki has mentioned is I hate writing. I hate, I hate, you know, I know, I know how important blogging is because mm -hmm. it's, you know, it gets, you know, that's part of helps your, your SEO ranking and driving people to your page all the time. Right. Uh, but what I struggle with, and I don't know what Nikki struggles with, what I struggle with is I keep, you know, I research the crap out of every article I write and I spend, <laughs> I spend so much time researching it by the time I think I'm getting done. It's like, well, you know, this, this issue is over with. I don't even want to post about this now. And I, I struggle with that so much. Is there any tips you can give on how I can do that easier? How I can make yeah. it easier on myself? Yeah, we could do a whole show about that. Well, um, we'll, we'll can, me... We can have you back to do a whole show on it. Yeah. Like maybe if you had Here's... any quick tips. <laughs> Absolutely. Here's the quick tips. Um, you know, most of the video you consume on YouTube is not uh, like high-definition movie production quality. 
Sure. And if every person that posted to YouTube waited until they had it perfected to put it out there, nothing would ever get shared. So the important part is just sharing as much as possible, as often as possible. And I'll give you two tips for how to write without writing. Um, you can create a lot of web content that's not text-based. For example, we're doing an interview here. Um, that's going to go on the web on YouTube and on the, the JPEG to Ross site. And that required almost no writing. So you can do video stuff or photo stuff um, to blog without taking the time to write. The other is um, write in a personal uh, tone like you would to while you're talking to your friend on the phone. Like how you would describe something on the phone is how you can write. And when you write in that style and with the topics in mind of not just your photos but education, like if you're writing about... Um, how to display uh, frames on the wall, or how lighting affects photos, or if you're a wedding um, photographer, it's like what flowers mean to photographs. There's all kinds of topics you can write about that are not sessions. Um, and if you just describe those topics like you would in an interview or a personal conversation, you have a much easier time coming up with stuff to say without overthinking the, the writing piece of it. It's just a, It's just a conversation, and extend that beyond posting sessions and I think that makes it much easier. Okay. Okay. That yeah, that helps I can do the videos and that that help uh makes it easier on me uh to do the videos. I you know, these I can do. Um and hold on, I'm I was typing something out in chat for a second. Okay. So now I've got the blog, I've got the website, I've got all that stuff. I got people coming to my site. I think this is where you yeah. were trying to go, and I kind of cut you off, sorry. But now how do I convert them to actual sales? Right, so to this point in the interview is where 99.9% .9 of people stop. Yeah. And they call me saying, how come I'm not getting any business? Um, really, it's just a change in your mindset. If you focus on, A, the customers that you don't have versus the ones you already have, you'll be doing a lot for yourself. For example, you took a photo, uh, you did a photo session over the weekend, it was a wedding, Zach and Amber got married, so you post on your blog, Zach and Amber got married, photo session. That is very much a post written for your existing clients who already paid you, you're not going to give any more money out of them. Mm -hmm. Instead, you want to change that mentality to craft that post for the people that don't know you yet. You write that post for your future business. Once you do that, it's much easier to be found in Google because the title would be something like uh, Ideas for Hotel Weddings in Sacramento, California, a nice searchable phrase that somebody who's looking for that, now it's a perfect match. Um, it's going to do much better on Facebook because nobody knew who Zach and Amber were, but they do want to see 10 cool photo ideas. Um, so just shifting that perspective, now you're writing it um, as a sales tool instead of uh, like a, a sneak peek or a gallery for, for uh, an existing client, and that alone should change the whole style, tone of your site, and really start to attract new leads. So if, I'm, if I, I do the photo shoot for the, the wedding, and instead of saying the people's names, when I go to do the blog post, I say... I, I put more keyword topics in there. What about when, the, when that couple comes to look at the photos? I don't think they know <laughs> or expect to have their names in there. It's not okay. like they're. Um, it's not like they're saying, "Gosh, darn it! I see myself on there, but my name is not written and my name's not searchable." Um, they okay. won't notice or care. Uh, plus. Um, there's many more people out there that, that don't know you than do know you. So from a marketing perspective, you want to cater to that ideal broad audience. That is a great tip because I have I don't know if I've ever seen anybody do that. I always see photographers say, yeah. you know, so and so so's wedding or a senior shoot, and they say the senior's name, you know, something right. like that. And not nothing, not thinking. They're always to me. Uh, I've always seen it where they're directing the post toward that person and maybe that that person's family or something not directing it to a wider audience that is a great tip thanks yeah, yeah. I mean from the senior example instead of saying uh, Zach senior photos you just want to describe the what made that one unique was it a 
uh, ranch style photos from you know El Camino High School or whatever the, the case might be. Um, now all of a sudden that's uh, that will attract the people that are interested in that topic. Because if somebody wants ranch style photos and they see it on Facebook or Pinterest or are searching for it, like in Google or uh, again Pinterest or even Twitter, um, they'll be able to find it and they'll want to read it with much more likelihood. Okay. Okay. Very good. Okay. So, uh, what other tips do you have for me to convert people? Yeah, so we've we've written a post, let's say, about a recent session. Yeah. And we've done all the the labeling, and you know, it's it's a session, and we've written it for future clients. Um, I would ask, what do future clients need to know about you before they hire you? Uh, most people will split that information into many different pages. They have their home page and assume that people go from their home page to their blog to the session oh, I like these photos, now let me look at the about page, the pricing page, the testimonials page, and then I'll contact them. Well, that's six, seven pages and a seven to eight minute web experience. <clears throat> the truth is people threw out that whole path on the website when they clicked through from Facebook to that individual post from their phone. They looked at one page for one minute, then they go back to Facebook. So you have to answer all those questions. You have to give all that information on that one page. And the analogy I give is think of every post or every gallery or every page as a flyer that would represent you on a store window or at a trade show. If you're going to hand out one flyer, what information would be on there? And that's what you want on every page. You certainly wouldn't hand out a flyer that says, um, ask me for the next flyer. And then you give them the next flyer, and then it says, ask me for my contact information. That's essentially what you're doing with this very siloed website. But if they came from Facebook, they read about these incredible ranch-style senior photos, and they love them and they want to hire you, next they want to know, well, who are you? Um, why should they hire you? How much do you cost? And why should, why should I contact you right now? So at the bottom of every page, uh, you give that information. Show who you are, show an award that you won or a testimonial, say how much you cost, and give them a reason to get in touch with you. Like, contact me today and I'll show you the top 10 senior hotspots in, in your city. Or I'll give you a behind the scenes tour of this venue that we were blogging about. If it's a bride, you'd like to go check that out. So you have to give them a reason um, to contact you. And so the point, I guess, is giving them all the information they need to, to hire you right there on that page and then telling them to do it. So the most overlooked piece uh, in marketing, it's called a call to action. But if you want something to do, want somebody to do something, you simply ask them to. Contact me now. Click here to book, book a session. Um, download this this free guide here with your email address. It's just, it tells them what to do, and when you do that, you'll find many more people are filling out that contact form or calling you because you've led them um, through the through this the steps you want them to do. Okay. Um, you know, I, I'm looking at your page now, and I don't have it pulled up in the thing right now, but yours, easy to remember, photographyspark.com. And I, do you have, do you use the footers much? I don't see, you're not using footers much. Yeah, so um, the goal of the goal of my homepage is to get people to read an article. Okay. Not to learn about me yet because they don't care who I am yet. But if you click on an individual blog post, then I've got footer widgets that say, "Who am I?" Read my top five articles or download my free ebook, uh, which are the three things I want them to do. I either want to get their information so I can follow up with them. I want them to know more about me, or I want them to read something else. So you can use footer widgets on a, a WordPress blog to get that information on every page. The only problem with that is now you've got kind of a blanket uh, statement about yourself on every page. Yeah. And the truth is, let's say you do um, portraits and families and weddings and seniors, that message really is different for each person. Like you're your headshot even and what you say about yourself to a senior is going to be very different than what you say to a bride or a mom. True, yeah. um, so it, it helps to have a very personalized um, 
audience targeted message on each page, but sometimes that's too cumbersome or time consuming. The next best thing is just to put the same you know footer widgets everywhere that say who you are and what you want them to do. Okay, I think uh, hold on one second. I'm going to try something that I've never done before. Is a few people out in chat are having a, some streaming issues. I'm going to downgrade what was streaming to live stream for them and see if that helps out, guys. So hold on, you may the stream may stop and come back up. Here we go. All right, guys. So you you probably lost me when I said something, but I stopped and restarted the stream with a lower bandwidth to see if that helps helps out some of that. But for now, we're going to have to keep going, and hopefully that fixed it for you. All right, so Zach, we covered a couple things on Waze. And y'all didn't miss anything. We stopped actually talking, by the way. <laughs> so you didn't miss anything as we, as we stopped and restarted. Zach, we talked about a couple of different ways to convert people uh, once they get to your page. And you mentioned mobile. How, how important is, is mobile? You know, you, you've got, you got your website, and I know a lot of so sites are doing what they call responsive now. What that, and if you don't know what responsive means, it means the site responds to the size of the screen you're looking at. And whether it's a uh, you know, big desktop on a 27-inch monitor uh, or a phone or a tablet or something in between, the site is supposed to respond and change itself to those, to those various screen sizes. How important is um, thinking mobile when I'm developing a website? It's, it's very important, and mobile usage is only going to increase. I was talking to a photographer today um, who was, I, I had to convince a little bit to go toward a responsive design because she has a standard photography blog, and it would cost some time and, and money to upgrade to responsive. But I looked at her Google Analytics stats, which said she had 32% of her traffic was coming from mobile devices. Mm. So, I mean, what do you think? Would you show a degraded experience to a third of your potential customers? No way. Um, so absolutely look for a mobile responsive theme. And if you think that your site's already mobile friendly, um, a couple years ago, before responsive really caught on, there would be a separate website and mobile site. So people would get to your page, would recognize their device, and it would say, okay, this is mobile. I'm going to show them a different experience. Um, that has search and sharing issues. Uh, quickly, we've, we've um, extended into responsive design, which gives the same page to every person. It just formats what is shown to, to work with the layout. So if you have like a wide three-column page, it would see, okay, you've got a small screen, let me compress that to one column, but it's the same material. So you get that desktop experience, but it's easy to read on a phone. Right. So absolutely, everybody should go that route. Um, and if you think of a third of your people are looking at your site on a phone, that that changes the game completely. It changes the size of your links. Um, it makes you need to put buttons, bulleted text for skimming, um, large photos, uh, clear navigation. Um, it just it makes you rethink how your user is um, experiencing your site. A one a conversion tactic for mobile that's very easy to do. You can create a hyperlink. Um, to a phone number so that from a phone they can they can tap that phone number to call you directly. Uh -huh. And all you have to do, instead of linking to HTTP something, you link to TEL colon and then your phone number, and they'll, they'll click that um, to be able to call you. So think about how conversion can increase when you have uh, you know something that simple for somebody to get in touch with you. That's the type of stuff we're talking about, because if you have 100 people and you go from 10% conversion to 20% conversion, you know, you just got 10 more phone calls just by having that button. It only takes a small increase in the percentage to really transform your business. Hmm. That, yeah, that's, that's uh, something. There. You mentioned large photos, though. If I'm doing this on a phone, how large does it need to be? Because I also got to worry about... I don't want to put you know every photo up there being a meg in size or some huge thing like that that's going to be bad to download on a phone because your phone's only so big. It may not need as much of a bigger right. photo. Right. So that's a great point. Um, take a collage, for example. A lot of people like to do collages. 
but if that sizes to a phone, um, now you've got 10 images in the space of one image, and people have to pinch and zoom and scroll left, right, up, down to be able to see all those photos. It's hard to do on a phone. So instead, you would want to show full width uh, photos stacked vertically down the page. Uh, but a big consideration for mobile is making sure those photos are compressed so that they load fast. And the easiest way to do that is just to save for web and Photoshop and reduce the quality. Uh, you'd be surprised uh, how good a photo will look at 50% quality. On the web, there's almost no visual difference, but the file size will be 30K instead of 150K. Mm -hmm. And when, when you've got 20 images in the blog, you're talking about 5, 10 seconds of load time, even longer on a phone. Yeah. So conversion begins, I guess, with the user initially coming. If they if they leave right away because your site took too long to load, um, you definitely can't convert them. Compression is, is a big factor, and Google even has it as a ranking factor. It's not going to rank uh, slow-loading pages. Yeah, no, I, I've heard that before, that uh, if your page is slow, and uh, that can be one thing, is you have too big of images on there, that that, that will reduce your SEO, reduce your ranking. Um, yeah. And, and Nikki out in chat said 2048 on the wide side is what she's heard from mobile devices. So you, when I say shrink this, the thing, it may not be, you don't want to put out a 150 by 150 thumbnail image. And we're not talking about that. We're talking about still a good looking, good size image, just that the file size has been reduced to a more reasonable amount. Yeah, you want, uh, if we're talking a WordPress blog, 600 to 900 pixels wide. Okay. Uh, I think I think wider than that is too wide, um, which would make people also scroll up and down to be able to see the full image. Yeah. So 600 to 900 pixels wide, 30 to 50K in file size. Okay. All right. Uh, anything else? Uh, how much do you want me to say? <laughs> Whatever you want. There's a, couple, there's a couple things I want to go go over, but you know we got we got time. So anything you, anything else you wanted to talk about on the conversion side? I I, I know I yeah. dis I distracted you in the beginning. I want I don't want to distract you, quite yet. <laughs> uh, that's quite all right. Well, let me let me give one more very important tip. Yeah. Um, on on I think the number one goal of every photographer's website should be to collect the identities of the people that are coming. So your number one goal should be to build your email list. The reason I say that is if you, you can hand out business cards all day long, right? But what are the chances those people are going to call you? I mean, almost zero. How many calls do you get off of business cards? So they seem interested at the time. They just don't come back later. Um, however, if you get their business card, now you can call them whenever you want, and you're in control of that sale. So collecting an email address on your site is the equivalent of getting somebody's business card. If you expect them to come to your site and bookmark it and look at everything you do and come back later, uh, it's just not going to happen. So you need to collect their email address. The more email addresses you have, the easier it is to sell. For example, if you've got a Valentine's Day mini session um, or a special price deadline for holiday cards, if you've got a thousand email addresses, you'll you know you'll hit you'll book all your sessions very quickly with a single email, versus having no email addresses. It's going to be a lot of legwork through blogging and Facebook and mm -hmm. word of mouth marketing to to hit your goal. So the way to collect email addresses is you can't just do a newsletter. You have to give something in exchange. Um, you have to give them something to download. And the way I do that on my site is with a free ebook. So you sign up for this free ebook, gives me your email address, and then I email out weekly articles that help you, you know, with your business, and therefore you trust me and start to learn from me, and over time maybe you'll hire me or buy something. So a photographer can take that same approach. You can create a little guide on the top venues in the area, or you can give out a, a wall display um, brochure, or um, tips for where people can order their prints. Any anything that they can just get quick and easy, they'll be much more likely to hand over their email address because nobody just wants to get another newsletter. Everybody's getting too much email. Right. So give them a give them a small hook, build your list, and that makes it much more easy to sell when you need to. Okay, and I'm on your site now. Uh, so where would I go to to see? I'm on the photographyspark.com. 
you can go to any article um, or to the blog, and at the bottom you'll see that in the footer. Um, it also pops up on the screen. So um, if you haven't already closed it, you I might get a pop-up. So. Yeah. <laughs> so you see a little, a little pop-up that will say, um, you know, welcome to the site. Here's a free ebook. If you like these topics, sign up now. Uh, so really, it's the it's the number one goal that I have is to grow my email list because then I can control uh, when I message and market to those people. Very good. Yeah, I see that here down to the bottom. Um... And this goes back to what you were talking about before. It's got a picture of you. It's, it's got a little bit about you. It's got the free ebook, uh, 20 pages of website uh, boosting tips. And um, if I say I hit the access now, that must be where it asks me for the email address and all that. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I, see, I don't do that at all. I need to. I need to. Set, I need to be. I'm learning a lot here. I don't know what the guys <laughs> in the chat are learning, but I'm learning a lot of things that we need to do, Tim. <laughs> It only help. I'll tell you, I never really thought of it as uh, looking at somebody's email address as a business card. And you're right. You know, I can't imagine how many business cards that I've collected over the years. And if I've actually utilized 10% of them, that's probably a lot. Yeah. And it's a much easier conversion for them to make than hiring you to do their wedding, which would be very difficult to do if somebody's on your site for one minute and just came from Facebook. But you can get them to download this free guide. And then right. over time, then when they're ready, they'll, they'll hire you. So it's, it's linking many small conversions together to lead to that big conversion at the end. Okay. All right. Um, you know, if it, one of the things we hear about from a lot of people is, and I don't know how to, to answer this, but we hear from a lot of people that I live in a small town. My, my number of people I have to, to, to market to is limited you know i don't maybe they live in a ten thousand person town i have uh limited capabilities why do i need a website you know what is a website going to do because the website you know a lot of photographers are, are more local than you know i'm not going to get a job in ireland um at least not right away i'd have to get you know big name so do i still need a website and and is there anything different i would do if for the for local stuff or should i be worrying Hey, I need to bring. If a town's that small, maybe I need to branch out a little bit beyond my town. Um, I guess it's personal preference. Uh, you still need a website because even through word of mouth, it's harder for me to refer you if I only know your name and maybe I forgot your last name. Maybe your name's hard to spell. Um, if I'm just telling somebody that, it's less effective than emailing them a link to your site where they can actually experience everything you offer. They can see for themselves the quality of images and the products and services. Without that, you're relying on somebody else to make the sale for you, uh, which might not happen. Um, as far as the size of the town, um, it depends. If you like staying within that town and don't want to go broader, certainly you could do that. Um, I read an article recently about a city with a population of 10,000 that has 20,000 likes on its Facebook page. Wow. Uh, so, you know, you can, you can certainly extend your marketing beyond that town, which may lead to new opportunities. Um, maybe it means charging more to travel, but I'm sure there's a price at which you'd be willing to do that. Sure. Uh, so I would, never, I would never focus too small if you need more to be successful. Uh, on the other hand, you only want to do the business you want to do. Uh, don't start doing stuff, you know, just because. But that last part you said is 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 critical there. So if you want to do this as a business, you know, make a living off of it. If you know, if it's not just a weekend job, if it's something you want to make a living off of, then maybe you will have to branch out beyond that small town, and, and maybe there's another town closer, close to you that you could travel to or, or something else. And even if that's not the case, you don't know 10 years from now, five years from now, or even right. one year from now, you may not be in that town. Right. And, and, and that goes to, you know, setting up the website now is not yeah. just for today. It's also for tomorrow. That I, I, I bet you a lot of people make mistakes when they're setting up their website and, and how they're designing it now that's going to hurt them later on. Mm -hmm. do, you, would, do you have any um, anything there? What do you see with people who the biggest mistakes that they make when setting up a website. And, and let's hope that we don't do too many of those. <laughs> <laughs> either either choosing a domain name that you want to change because yeah, we did uh, that one. <laughs> a, do, a domain name establishes history. The age of that domain is important to Google. 
because a site that's been around a long time means your business has been around a long time and therefore should have more trust and rank. Um, so if you try and change your domain name later, it's going to be expensive and you're going to take a hit as far as search goes. Um, the other thing is uh, not doing a WordPress blog right out of the gate. So you'll take the time to create a whole flash site or a whole gallery site. Um, you'll be turning away business because it might not work on a phone. Uh, and eventually you're going to have to change it later to a blog anyway to, to really be up to date as far as internet trends are going um, okay. and to be search and social and mobile friendly. So uh, it's much easier to start with a WordPress blog than to try and redo your business later. And, and so here's what we did. I shouldn't say we because Tim had nothing to do with it. It was all me. <laughs> um, I didn't know what theme I wanted for JPEG to Raw. So I said, you know what? I'll start the show on another URL, uh, uh, a domain I own. I'll, oh, start it right. over, I'll start it over there. And over time, I will eventually come up, find the theme I want, and then I'll start JPEG to Raw, the actual, the actual site. And we went that way for six, seven, eight months or whatever on the other site. At, at least eight months. And actually, so now here's where I'm at, Zach. This is what I'm doing. Is I have the old site still going and JPEG to Raw still going. And when I do a post, because we the actual feed burner gets the data. And I could change the feed burner easily. But the feed burner is getting the, the files. So if you go to iTunes and, and download the podcast, iTunes doesn't store the file. It's stored on our website. It's stored on the other site. So now when I, every time I do a post, I've got to do it on both sites. Yeah. So how bad there's am I, a, how bad am I hurting a, myself? <laughs> pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's happening is actually if, I, if you do a, a search on for photography podcasts, both of them are moving up in the ranks. Yeah. Um, you might be looking at one phrase. Uh, the truth is there will be hundreds or thousands of phrases people search to find okay. you. And you might not be so lucky with the other 999. <laughs> <laughs> well, I definitely forward one domain to the other domain. And that, that's a great point on a big mistake is trying to manage two sites because it's expensive, time consuming. And yeah. now you are basically have two individual businesses that are only at 50% yeah. when really you need to put those together for your audience to say everything is here in this one spot. It is a pain in the butt, I tell you that. And, you know, you're talking about splitting the business. If I look at uh, Google Analytics, they're, they're getting a, about the same traffic, which means that people are, are, are being split. They're going from, to one to the other, uh, mm -hmm. one or the other. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the one thing that's odd, and we hadn't talk, we're not talking that much about SEO tonight, but uh, maybe unless – did you have more or can I switch? Go ahead, switch. Um, one thing that's odd is the bounce rates are dramatically different on the two. And, and what's bad is the new site is worse. <laughs> uh, how, how important is the bounce rate? And maybe say something about what bounce rate is for people who don't know that. Yeah, on uh, tiffinbox.org, I just posted an article today that ah, explains great timing. What, what is bounce rate? Should photographers care? Um, I, don't, I don't think so for the most part, for, for most general photographers. But bounce rate is a, a number, it's a percentage between 1 and 100. It means what percentage of your website visitors did not click anything. So they came to the page, left from the page, didn't click anywhere. So they only viewed one page. Obviously, a bounce is not good because if you, if you can keep people looking at more stuff on your site, there's a higher likelihood they'll hire you. Yet, in today's age where a lot of people are going right into an article from Google or Facebook or Pinterest, they don't really need to see anything else. They only want to see that one page, and it's okay for them to leave because you're getting them maybe once a week coming to an article and leaving, coming to an article and leaving. So bounce rate's not something to be concerned about uh, too much. Um, what you can do is use it as a benchmark to see if you can improve it. So if your home page bounce rate's 70%, maybe you tweak the design or add a, a free offer to try and encourage people to link and see if the bounce rate goes down. So it's really just a benchmark to see, can you change it if you even want to? Okay. Um, there's so many factors, I, I wouldn't get too caught up in it. Okay, and I, um, I will put this link in the show notes, and I have it pulled up now so people are able to see it, the article you just wrote. That's perfect timing uh, with that. Yeah. Um, okay, so 
any any quick tips on SEO? What am I? Any? I think I saw you did an article somewhere. Maybe I can find it. Five minutes yeah. to a better five minutes to a better website. That's what I saw. Um, yeah, that was a, a uh, an article on um, Chic Magazine that I wrote for them with Elizabeth Halford. Uh, but yeah, so the basic thing on SEO that uh, I don't think everybody knows yet is you can keyword your page all you want, but it doesn't mean it's the best page on that subject, aka it doesn't deserve to rank well until you've proven your authority by getting lots of links from other sites. Oh. So if you could focus on one thing from a search perspective, it's contributing to other sites. So like, I'm doing this article, with the, uh, this interview with you, you'll post a link to me on your website. That helps prove to Google that I'm important because here I'm being interviewed and it knows that. So the more places I'm interviewed, the more magazines I write in, the more blogs I post to, builds up my credibility. So when I write an article on SEO, it should rank high for photographers because I'm talking about it and being featured in, in major publications and media outlets for that topic. And so the article I write is more important than something somebody else wrote who doesn't focus on that and uh, maybe doesn't have the, the age uh, or history or authority that I have in, in writing on that topic. So um, as often as you can get press and featured on other sites, that will help you move up the ranks. And I talk about, it's a good segue into the, the ebook that I wrote. It's mm -hmm. a search engine cookbook. So that in tiny increments today, if you're in a fast food kind of a, a mood, you can grab a, a five minute update that'll help your SEO. And tomorrow, if you want to spend an hour and you've got a blog, or a splash page, or um, a Google Plus account, you can just grab the recipe to optimize that piece. And we've got a special for your listeners. If you use uh, discount code RAW at photographyspark.com, you can get the ebook for $39 instead of $99, which is a huge deal. And you should be able to pick up a ton of search-related tips so you can get more business and conversion that way. Yeah, no, thank you very much for that. If y'all didn't catch that, that's $60 off of, of this. And SE, if you have a website, which if you're a photographer trying to sell any, any of your work or just want people to see your work, um, you know, SEO is something you have to pay attention to. Uh, it's the only way to, to, to get moved up in the Google rankings. And, um, you know, Zach here has got a great book. Uh, I got pulled up now so people can see it, SEO Cookbook. And normally goes for ninety nine dollars. He's given us, I think, until no, end of November, right? right. End of mm -hmm. November. If you use the code RAW R A W, um, and and you'll get sixty dollars off. So you get it for thirty nine ninety nine thirty nine dollars. And we're going to give actually JPEG RAW is going to give one away also. So if you don't if you don't win it, then make sure you buy it before the end of November. And it's got some great tips in there. We I, you know I've been trying to do more with that, but I I definitely want to look at that too. Um, I think I'll take advantage of the code because I want to go out there and look at that because, you know, that's one of the things we got to worry about, Tim, is move up in rankings. There's a lot of photography podcasts out there. Although, <laughs> but we, but although, we are the best. Although, Zach, I am, making the, I am making the claim until somebody tells me I can't um, that we, and, and there's going to be a lot of ifs in this or whatever <laughs> <laughs> claims in here, that we are the number one photography podcast, comma, <laughs> broadcast live weekly, comma, <laughs> where, where the people in chat can interact uh, with the, the host uh, and the guest by asking questions. Are we the yeah. only one like that? Comma live. I think I said broadcast live, so I got all that. So however many the, the conditions that was, I'm claiming we're the number one. <laughs> and that's because, you know, as you look around, there's not a whole lot of them that do it live, the ones that do, don't do it with video. Uh, and are there, there's not ones that allow questions into there. So I'm, mm -hmm. I'm claiming that. <laughs> I'm probably the only one that posts to, to the Zoom player as well. Zoom, BlackBerry, and TiVo. So if you couldn't watch live, if your video, <laughs> no, if, you, if your video messed up any tonight and you, and you missed some of the great information Zach was giving us, yeah, all those places you just said, Tim. You got, of course, iTunes, <laughs> YouTube, uh, BlackBerry, Zoom. I, mean, you know, I don't know if anybody even uses Zoom anymore. Uh, and, or BlackBerry. Uh, and TiVo. 
<laughs> so that's great for your search uh, optimization because you've got you know branches out there into all the different networks. I mean, YouTube is the second largest search engine. It's bigger than Bing and Yahoo. Mm -hmm. um, so just having content on there makes you much more searched. Yeah, no, it, it in uh, that's we have seen that that that's gone up quite a bit. We were in a race with another person, another podcaster, on seeing who can get to a thousand first, and it, and <laughs> blew him away. Blew him away. Yeah, he's <laughs> he's, he's beating us in other categories. But uh, so Zach, any what's up for Zach next? And we got a few things to go over toward the end of the show, so we have like eight minutes left. If you have any questions for Zach, oh, and somebody said I should say from Swanee. So just in case. All those other conditions doesn't make us number one. And somebody else comes out and says, no, we do that. And we got 50,000 live viewers every week. I can add in comma from Swanee, which is the town I live in. And then I know <laughs> I got it. <laughs> uh, okay. Thanks, Terry, out there in chat. <laughs> Any, uh, what a loyal, what a loyal listener that Terry knows uh, where you're from. <laughs> well, if you've listened for a while, I I do say that, and uh, for everyone, every now and then. Any, uh, what's up? Well, what's up next for Zach? What do you? Because I I see you know as I started doing research on you, Zach, I see you everywhere. You've been on Twip with, uh, um, Frederick. 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 Yep, you've been on there. You've been just all over the place. You just recently won. Heck, do I have that pulled up here? You won. You're one of the 20 amazing people who will help you grow your and rock your wedding business. Uh, you, that was a big honor to be in that group. Congratulations. <laughs> you, so you. what's next for Zach? Um, I'm starting to, to branch out and post uh, more products to my site. Okay. Um, so we just released a, an action set. Um, Stacy Jensen from Color Veil Actions. Uh, she produced an action set for Photography Spark. Um, so you'll, you'll see that more and more. I'm trying to educate people on general business, which is um, part of my background, instead of just focusing on the web stuff, which is pretty niche. Mm -hmm. So you'll see more products, more advice, um, and discussions around those sort of topics. And um, I'm looking forward to Black Friday, too, yeah. <laughs> coming up this month. And you mentioned uh, you mentioned Stacy. Uh, I was talking about this in a pre-show. What a small world! I didn't know you two were connected. Stacy's been a friend of the show for, gosh, a long, long time, and she's out there in chat right now. I just see. Uh, <laughs> hey, Stacy. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's a small world there. And she mentioned the Theme Forest as a place to get your WordPress, um, WordPress. She said blogs, but I guess your WordPress theme. Uh -huh. I think that's where I got mine. There's a lot of uh, premium themes you can buy from uh, Theme Forest. Yeah, the good thing about themes is you can get a whole new look uh, for under $100. And I would just Google search responsive WordPress theme, uh, and you'll find all kinds of alternatives. Um, theme Forest is a good one, though. Yeah. All right. Um, I don't know. Did I cut you off on what was next for Zach? No. Um, so, you know, the the... The product um, co-branding with uh, Color Veil has been great, and I expect a lot more of that type of thing in the future. Okay, very good, and that's that's awesome to see uh, you two working together. I, I, you know, JPEG Law loves Stacy. Uh, she's been a great great friend of the show, as I mentioned before. So, if people wanted to get in touch with Zach, you know, we mentioned PhotographySpark.com, um, and I never asked you how that name come about, Photography Spark. Uh, well, I had, I had sold my previous business and needed to reinvent it, and I, I think it just came to me as that's kind of my goal is to spark photography businesses, and it just it made sense, easy to remember. Uh, it was available on all social media channels, <laughs> everything you need in a new business name. And I was about to say, it's very easy to remember. I remember that from the first time I went there. Uh, so you can find you on, on photographyspark.com. And where else? Uh, are you on Twitter, on Google Plus? Oh, yeah. Uh, it, uh, LinkedIn, uh, Facebook, Pinterest. Um, so just, I mean, you could Google Zach Prez and, and find everywhere that I am. So in whatever manner you would like to connect, I would appreciate it. Okay. And we'll have every link I can find. And I found, you know, I have the Google Plus, I have the Facebook, I have 
the Pinterest, all those. And then a lot of them are on your photographyspark.com. I'll put mm-hmm. those in the show notes, so we'll have a lot of those links. If if you didn't get them as we're talking about them, I have them in the show notes, so you can go get them from there. Um, so, Zach, do you mind hanging out with us or, uh, as we go over the photos for the, the contest here, the challenge? Sure. Okay. So, all right, every month, Zach, we, the Facebook group that we have – has a photo challenge and the photo challenge works as a theme this theme for october was self-portraits i think there was a thing in there, rule of thirds but i'm not sure we kind of stuck to that but it was self-portraits and you can you submit your photo into the facebook group and then the members of the facebook group vote on them by liking the images and then the top three are are taken into the admins we have you know tim and i are an admin and then we have gina perry and we have uh, Nikki out there, which I think she's still out there. And then we have Seth White, who are all admins. And then the admins take those three and pick a winner from that. And we're not tied to whoever got the most likes. Um, otherwise, you'd know who the winner was already. So <laughs> what we – hold on a second. We pick the – go through them, and in this case – and it happens every once in a while, that one of the admins, because they're not banned from joining, uh, entering the contest, one of the admins, if they're ever in the finalist, then a fourth, place, a fourth person is also added. So that way, an admin never takes a non-admin spot. So this month, actually, Seth White, was, who was an admin, uh, I don't know if you were on the live page at all, so maybe you can't see this, Zach, um, but he was one of the finalists. So this month we'll have four entries instead of three. So Seth White was, was one of the entries. And Tim, I don't have it pulled up here, but if you want to add some of your, I'll add my comment. And then if you want to add some of the comments too, we can go back and forth. Well, um, I think, uh, I definitely think with, uh, with this picture, what I liked about it was definitely the framing. And I had in the back of my mind, uh, the rule of thirds, even though, like you said, it wasn't a, a big thing, but the black and white uh, with uh, the bright, white on the left mm-hmm. side really was a, a strong element to this picture. Now, granted, he wasn't looking directly at the camera, which kind of sometimes you see as the selfie, but uh, I, I just love the picture of this. By the way, I, I, I am not a big fan of the word selfie. Wow. <laughs> just a sidetrack there. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you can say it all you want, Tim. You know, I selfie, really like this selfie, one, too. Selfie, selfie, <laughs> selfie. I really like this one, too, Tim. I like the I, – I think he stuck to the rule of thirds probably better than just about anybody. Um, and I like the black and white conversion of it and just the looking out. You know, I, there's a lot of things you can read from him looking out the window. He's got his camera in, in his, uh, around his neck. So, like, he's, he's looking out, getting ready to go out there and shoot. Or maybe it's bad weather and he can't go out. I don't know. There's a lot or, or like Rennie that. says, uh, it looks like he's on a stakeout. It could be, too. <laughs> um, the next one here was by Danielle, and I, I thought I saw her out there earlier. And this is another great one. I like she got her iPhone, or is that an Android? I can't tell in the size of the image. Um, but she has that on, 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 on the table. She's got Keep Calm, Hot Mess uh, on, on the screen of it. And then it looks like she's kind of either passed out or something on the table. I like the... The harsh, um, I think it, maybe I shouldn't say that until I know what it is, but I'm going to say the harsh uh, post-processing she's done to it. It's a little bit harder post-processing she's done. This was one of my favorites uh, in this in this group, too. Any the picture comment? didn't come up yet, though. Didn't I don't know if anybody see. No, I don't. Oh, there it is. I can see it. Yep. Yeah. It's an iPhone. It's an iPhone? Okay. All right. And... She is here, though. So she was here earlier, I think. So like, I love that photo. That was one of the ones I was glad to see it got into the finals. Next one's from uh, Jeannie. And actually, this... So, Zach, the, the winner gets to also pick the theme for the next month. So Jeannie was actually one of the winners uh, previous month, and she chose the, the topic for this month. The, the, um, I like the theme here. She's reading a book about DSLR for dummies. You know, she's in a tub. Uh, you can't see anything, you know, par- which is good because, you know, we are a family Lots of thing bubbles. because of the bubbles. So I like the overall um, idea behind the shot. I think it was very creative. Just like Danielle's. Hers was very creative, too. I should mention that. Okay. Oh, Danielle's back. 
Yeah. Or she was still here. Yeah. <laughs> I see the pick. Okay. And then the last one is by Rachel. And this is, I believe, this is Rachel's first time as one of the finalists. So congratulations, Rachel Allen, and, and uh, being one of the finalists. And this one, uh, I love the colors in it. Um, the, the only downside to this one is I can't see her face. And I guess right, and I, and I think also that it was it, it was two people in there it was uh you don't have was to one see of the things. Face. I guess you don't have to see the face because actually, and this happens every month. My fav, one of my favorites. I would I don't want to say my favorite. One of my favorites does not make the finals. And this month, one again that happened. So okay, there's your four finalists. The admins voted. And Tim, do we have any drum roll or should I just? Uh, it's no. it's okay. Yeah. I'll get the trumpet afterwards. Okay. The winner this month, and the winner gets to pick the challenge for January, because December, remember, is going to be your best photo of the year, no topic, just whatever you have. They get to pick the thing for January, and they get the $25 Amazon gift certificate, and they get their their photo posted on the Facebook group is Cess White. Congratulations, Cess. He's not even out there in chat, but we'll have to tell him later. <laughs> uh, congratulations, Seth. Great photo. Um, and we look forward to seeing your entry for next month and this month. Well done, Seth, as Gina says. All right. So that is that. Um, let me get this ready. Transition this back. If you didn't win, you know, there's always next month. And December, as I mentioned, is going to be a special month because you can pick any photo you took in, in 2013. You can, any topic, that, you know, it doesn't matter the topic. And you, the winner gets a $100 Amazon gift certificate. So very nice. All right. Uh, as we mentioned before, if you, the best way to get the show is subscribing. You can have a lot of different choices. YouTube, uh, I, iTunes, TiVo, BlackBerry, Zune. <laughs> oh, and, and if you don't, if you want the audio only, Stitcher Radio and Spreaker Radio. So you get all those different ways you can get it. Anything else I'm forgetting there, Tim? No, I, th I still chuckle whenever <laughs> oh. I hear the uh, getting um, uh, uh, video uh, audio only. Oh, it's, yeah. it's so hard. <laughs> people, that's uh, most people get the audio only. Okay, but uh, one last thing: if we are giving away, we're still giving away the Flern video, and all you gotta do is go into our Facebook group, and there's a post at the top of it, and it tells you how to enter the Facebook the Flern video giveaway. Just uh, comment on that thread, and you will be entered in the giveaway, and we'll do it toward the end of November, right at the end of November. And our Facebook group now, Tim, has just crossed the 1,000 mark. So 1,002. One, oh, okay. So I got another one added. <laughs> I got to refresh because it's, it's changed since then. So, yes, if you're not a member of the Facebook group, come out there and join the Facebook group. And I mention this every week, and I will until someone comes and joins me, that we have a forums, a forum <laughs> on JPEG to Raw. <laughs> and I'm the only one posting out there. As soon as I booked Zach, I went onto our calendar and I booked Zach's going to be on this date. I put all his links out there, but, you know, not all of them, but Zach, the ones I knew. Your website, you know, all these aren't ones. So if, if you want to know, you know, almost to the minute when I book somebody, when Zach said I can come on November 12th, I immediately went out there when we got off, when I got after getting that email and I put, you know, Zach's coming on. I might not have had a show number right because something might happen in between here and there. But you could go and see, all right, it's Zach. Who's Zach? If you didn't know already. And you can see all his links and you can look at what, you know, uh, all of Zach's work and, and get all excited and Zach's coming on and know a little bit about him before he comes on. Um, so that's one thing. And then there's the forum where you can come in and just talk. So right now it's really lonely. I'm the only one out there because everybody loves Facebook and doesn't want to get off of that. <laughs> all right. So remember, we're off for the next two weeks. But this show, if, you, if it messed up on you during the show, um, will be available in a, few, in a couple of days, maybe about toward the end of the week. And, and you can get it to wherever you want to get it to. But until next time, keep it raw. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. everybody.